Thanks, Dad, for swearing my speech. <laughs> exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, I'm off the bar. <laughs> Tequila? <laughs> Maybe later. Okay. On behalf of me and my wife. <laughs> to make so thank you very much really for everyone coming down to yeah <laughs> as we know it's a very not an easy place to get to especially as most of us being from five miles drive away people all over so thank you for that fortunately there are a few people who can't make it today can't make it wrong no we can't for a while can't do that but we know that it's expensive to get to it's quite far yeah. glad everyone's here I would like to take this opportunity to thank two people. I don't know who they could be. <laughs> they helped me a lot over the years. An awful lot. You've helped me become everything I am today, pretty much. Helped me through my career, university, through pretty much everything. And of course, the clothes washing while I was in <laughs> That was a great help, honestly. I'll still bring some hope, don't worry. <laughs> you know, I always told them, Mom, that when I get older to repay you, I'm going to buy you something nice. I said, pretty much, I'm going to need to buy you a Ferrari. Yes. <laughs> I've always told them this. But, <laughs> it's coming, don't, don't worry. <laughs> but until I win the lottery, <laughs> I say until I win the lottery, it's happening. Give me a few years. I'll, um, I'll give you this. speech. Very nice. I'd like to thank Stanley for very kind words. Awesome speech. I'm really, really proud to come Jen's husband and also Irene and Stanley's son. <laughs> uh, yeah, would like to thank them for all the kindness, especially from day one. Always been very, very welcome to me. First time I met Stanley. <laughs> I think Jen remembers this one. I think Joel might be. Right. <laughs> it's in um, Sheffield, in a bowling alley, on a dance machine. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> we bonded from day one. <laughs> so that's what you need. Dance machine and terrible dancing. Seriously, bad. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to thank everyone here at Tom's Beaches. The food is fantastic. Can I come again tomorrow? <laughs> I'd like to thank Jess for singing. Find a Jen's song while we walk down the aisle. Yeah. For those who don't know, that is uh, the song that I proposed to Jen with, so it means a lot. Oh. <laughs> 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 I may thank my best man. <laughs> yeah, depending on the speech later on. We'll see what happens. And also, my honorary best man, Tom Lee, sadly can't be here today. I'm sure if he was here, pretty much over there in the bar area, regarding him, of course. But I would like to thank them for the fantastic tag team over in Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> and the great or lack of memories. It's an extremely strong beer and some fantastic drinking games. I missed the last thing one night and that was it. <laughs> Show your man. <laughs> I haven't got him on me. I'd like to thank the bridesmaid. 
kids. You all are fantastic today. You do. Of course, not forgetting the two man mates. Yay! Nick, you look good. I've got you two. Why are you laughing there? There's one there and there's one back there. Show yourself. Unfortunately, they wouldn't wear the dresses today. <laughs> to I was suits. going to. I know you were, job. The suits look pretty good, though. And the one person I'd like to thank the most is my now wife, Jenny. What can I say? Thank you for marrying me. I'm not too sure why you did it. <laughs> but the truth is, you are amazing. Without you, I really wouldn't be half the man I am. Oh, don't you. do this. <laughs> <laughs> it is an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go. so many more ways than you even know. You're the kindest, the smartest, the most fantastic, exciting person I know I ever will ever meet. I do love you so much. You mean the world to me and I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. Oh. I'd like to propose two toasts. One to absent friends and family. Absent friends. And also my now wife, Jenny Chun Yi Redfern. <laughs> so it's the bar? It's the bar? It's Kiwi? Yeah. Well, nobody stole our speech. Oh, okay. This is quite good. <laughs> I think they'll all agree with me that it is great to see a man on the up. A man who's been through school, done really quite well for himself, worked hard, managed to get himself to place at university, gone on to Sheffield, got a great degree at the end of it all, met Jenny, gone on, ended up with his own business, really looking good. But enough about me. <laughs> We're here to talk about Neil. <laughs> We've spent some time with him over the past couple of days. And, you know, he might well have been and now might be especially quite concerned about what we might say. Very concerned. What stories might come out. <laughs> but, you know, I'd like to say we'll keep this short. Hopefully pain free. <laughs> and this might be the most uncomfortable few minutes of your day now. <laughs> Bring it on. But I am sorry to say, Jenny, the most uncomfortable few minutes of your day Come later on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not realised that yet? Sorry. You don't look like they know what you're on about. <laughs> They've had a few <laughs> glasses of wine. Leave them alone, please. We've done nothing with Neil. We don't know. Who are you? And you may be wondering why there are four of us up here. It is perfectly simple. Neil had a straightforward task. Find a best man. <laughs> Unfortunately, he could only find four barely competent ones. <laughs> it was evidently quite a struggle. <laughs> but going back, going back, early in his life, Neil had a promising start. Gordon, Back in the corner there, hiding away behind that later-to-be giant cocktail. 
<laughs> he was a pioneer in Chester of the decorating trade. <laughs> really started out something quite special. Who passed that on later in life after Jim had finished a promising global career as a football player. Passed on those skills to continue that business. So Neil had all this opportunity. <laughs> what could he do with it? Unfortunately for Neil, young Neil, early on in life, showed that he quite simply wasn't really the practical businessman. <laughs> Whilst trying to help build a swimming pool for Gordon, <laughs> holding a brick above his head, <laughs> unfortunately he let go. <laughs> There's still a scar on his head. <laughs> And I'm afraid to say you have to settle for programming. <laughs> Mind tell you, I'd like the best of us. <laughs> I, I was caught up in the moment. So a lot of you will have known Neil his whole life, or at least since he was a young boy. Um, and, and some of you as well will have met him later on in life, maybe at university or at school. Um, so what I'm about to tell you now will be a reminder to those who've known him for a long time, and, and interesting for those who have met him later on in life. <laughs> Basically, as a boy, Neil, uh, without wanting to be harsh to him, he, were, he, he was quite small. <laughs> he, was, he was also very shy uh, and very quiet. Much like myself, to be honest. <laughs> um, he was also clean cut, like most boys are. And uh, he, he was uh, unfortunately very uh, domestically challenged. <laughs> now, he went off to university, and uh, when he came back, there was, there was a stark contrast. A few of us actually uh, introduced ourselves to this new man on the street, <laughs> not really knowing who this guy was. And it turned out to be Neil, of course. It was a dramatic change, basically after one term at university. Where he was small, he was now of average size. <laughs> where he once was shy, he was outgoing. Once was quiet, now occasionally boisterous, um, but unfortunately probably more domestically challenged. So it's, a, it's a scientific marvel that a man can survive on one pot noodle a day. Um, this change was uh, quite dramatic and, you know, as uh, I've had a, I've, I've met some people who've, who've been through the change um, and of course, Neil's not the, the normal demographic, he's, uh, he's a bit younger and, and male, but, but the hallmarks were all there, I mean, uh, where he was once clean cut, he was now uh, rugged, or, but, but to be honest, rugged's a bit uh, generous because that suggests he planned that, I think the word is more unkempt. So, I think hormones have clearly been involved because uh, it's unnatural to grow that much hair in one term. <laughs> and, and then when he, when he met Jenny, there was definitely, uh, he definitely had some hot flushes as well. Um, one episode uh, which kind of typifies this new boisterous attitude in Neil um, was after he had a run-in with... Uh, a large bottle of Jack Daniels one night when he was back in Chester. <laughs> Basically, we, we were all walking home at the end of the night, uh, straight home. Uh, Neil was taking a more zigzag path. <laughs> um, when when he, he got involved in a bit of an altercation with another man, I, I hasten to add that there was no violence, so don't think too badly of him. But there was an exchange of words and uh, some quite unpleasant words, to be honest. Basically, uh, n n both men were stood there, neither would back down. They, they were locked in a stare, exchanging words. This must have gone on for 10 or 15 minutes. Anyway, at the end of it all, uh, Neil must have decided, you know, he's the bigger man, he's going to walk away. So, uh, 
So he walked away, and, and, and that was that. But I don't want it to reflect too badly on Neil, because that shot mannequin did look at your funny. <laughs> <laughs> such nice weather over the last few days, uh, it, it brought to mind another another funny story about Neil. This is off script now, by the way. It, it's, it's, not, it's not too bad. Um, um, this is, we went to, uh, we went to Corfu after we finished our A-levels and, and uh, a few of us had mishaps with the sun cream, but none more so than Neil, who in, in, a, in, a ha in his haste to apply it to himself managed to, uh, to just streak it across himself like this, leaving finger marks, which of course, when he burned, left uh, stripes, red and white. The following day, he didn't get any better because, uh, trying to be clever, he applied sun cream only to the, the red stripes, in the hope that the rest would be burned, and then he'd be a uniform red colour. His artistic skills didn't uh, lend to this, though, because he ended up with double the number of stripes. Um, some of you might know we've um, a, a big group of us have been staying in a house up the road uh, for the last few days, and, and for traditional reasons, Neil came to, to spend last night with us in the house, um, and he and he came and had a, a bit of a chat with me later on. Sorry about this, Neil. So, uh, so you, you might know that I'm married to Jennifer over here. Who's got the maternal outline from the side? <laughs> I told you I've mentioned you. <laughs> I knew you wanted me to. <laughs> Any, anyway, so uh, so we're we're going to be married two years in a few in a few in a couple of months. So uh, <laughs> sometime in the future. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so Neil came to talk to me with um, as as a man who's had a, a small amount of experience of married life, um, and I think he was looking for a bit of advice, and he want, he wanted to air some views, and and that was good. <laughs> so we chatted for a while. Sorry to 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 bring this up, Neil. I, I know that when we talked, uh, you didn't expect me to relay it to everyone. <laughs> First of all, he said that he, uh, he would uh, like to be a model husband, so I think we can all applaud that. You do that. <laughs> and uh, secondly, and excitingly, he said at some point in the future, uh, he, he'd love to be a model father. <laughs> Not that he disclosed that anything was close at hand, but you, you could maybe ask them at some point how, how long it's going to take to, for the first child. That's a lovely question. That's, that's a lovely question to ask on the wedding day. No pressure there. Um, so yeah, so he said he wanted. I'm saying at some point in the future, not now. So uh, so that was the second thing. He wanted to be a model father. And then this is probably most embarrassing. I'm sorry about this, Neil. He, he confessed that he, he really wanted to be a model lover. <laughs> so I looked up the term model in the dictionary and it said a tiny artificial representation of the real thing. <laughs> okay, well... Not everybody knows this about Neil, but he shows great bravery every day of his life. He does. He, does. he suffers with a severe medical condition. That wasn't, that wasn't the punchline. <laughs> and you may be wondering why Tom isn't doing this, given his medical expertise. But, you know, Tom has a small problem of patient doctor confidentiality, so he's ethically bound not to disclose this with you. But I don't have that problem. <laughs> um, it really limits what Neil can do. Um, as I was saying, he's, um, at most times, suffers with it. He's bedridden. And he, this is a serious matter. And it can happen at any time of day, any day, any time during the week. And, uh, the conditions are, he, he's stricken with confusion, <laughs> disorientation, 
nausea, which is a loss of the sphincter function, blurred vision, and you can't perform simple tasks. I am, of course, talking about Maximus Hangoverus. <laughs> or in Latin, horrendous hangovers. <laughs> and there's been discussions in medical journals about it. And in the community, they're thinking of changing the name to a name more suitably uh, in line with the worst case they've ever seen. They're thinking of calling it Redfern's Curse. <laughs> And, and this name not only shows the, the traumatic stress that it causes on Neil, but also the most disturbing feature of it all, that it is all self-inflicted. <laughs> <laughs> some, some of you may know that we took a trip, a road trip, across America, east to west coast. <laughs> and we were, we were a little way into our, our epic voyage. And we were, we were in New York. And as anyone who's been to New York can testify, it is a beautiful place. It's a highlight of any tourist uh, adventure. And we were, we were there, and we, we wanted to see all the sights. So one evening we went out, and we sampled 20 bottles of local culture each. <laughs> and uh, we, we rose the next morning, and we, we set off to see all these beautiful sights. And uh, we got to the subway station, which was about 200 yards from, from our mobile home. And uh, Neil told us, I can't go on, boys. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back. <laughs> so, so he went back to the sanctitude of the RV, and we went, we went off without him. We, we, didn't, we didn't see how it was going on. It was hard. It was, it was a hard decision. It was a really hard decision. We made it. But, but, we were tough enough and, and we made it. So we went out, we saw the sights, and, and we came back later that evening. We returned to the RV and we found Neil prone on the bed. Well, it, it was a sofa that had been made into a bed. But he was there and he was wearing just a watch and one leg of his shorts. <laughs> and, and he asked us at night, is it lunchtime yet? <laughs> and we, we knew at that moment that a severe episode of Redfern's curse had taken hold of him. And there was not much hope. Oh, no, I'm pleased to say that he did pull through this episode and, and persevered. And despite his condition, was even allowed to drive our RV. You know, a nine and a half metre long. 10 foot wide, five ton behemoth of a mobile home, which we rather brazenly proceeded to take through the heart of cities, uh, unsuspecting, you know, coastal towns. And it, it was in one of these coastal towns in Southern California when uh, the incident occurred. Oh. <laughs> Let me set the scene. Right. We were near the end of the trip. We'd managed to navigate from one ocean to the other. We're mere days away from completing, completing our eight and a half thousand mile journey across the great states. Traffic was heavy, with pedestrians alongside. It was then we spotted the jogger, unsuspecting jogger, keeping pace with us on the pavement. Sorry, sidewalk. Uh, he began to dodge in and out of pedestrians that got in his way, moving ever closer to the RV. He was running. He wasn't running fast enough. <laughs> Not many people know what it's like to kill a man. In those split seconds, the knowledge hit Neil square between the eyes. Or should we say? The gigantic wing mirror hit that jogger square in the back of the head. <laughs> Have any of you seen a giant redwood fall in the forest? A gazelle taken down by a lion? A gorilla snapping a twig? He fell. He fell hard. At that point, we realised we had choices. Do we stop and help the man? Well, what was left of the man? Or do we help Neil? Do we make a run for the state border? We exchanged a look. 
No words necessary. In that moment, we knew we would turn Neil in. <laughs> it was at that moment, to everyone's surprise, the jogger picked himself up, dusted himself off, corrected our hard wing mirror, and jogged off into the distance without a backward look. <laughs> But, I mean, it's fair to say, Neil was pretty wound up by the day's events, and the following day was one of the worst confirmed cases of Redfern's curse. <laughs> but the trip wasn't all bad. You know, as many of you know, Neil was one of the luckiest men alive. And the trip did involve a visit to Sin City, Las Vegas. Only Neil can put a couple of quarters into a slot machine and win the $100 jackpot. That didn't win us any friends, I'll tell you. <laughs> But, um, I mean, these are skills he honed through weeks, months, years, conning old age pensioners at the Conservative Club Bingo, <laughs> earning him the nickname, the Bingo Bandit. <laughs> but every hot streak has to come to an end. No one can remain lucky forever. So is it luck or some sound judgment that's brought Neil here today? Now, either way, Long may it continue. Uh, so to sum this up in the lines of a couple of traditional marriage vows, I mean, today, Neil took Jen, for better or for worse. Uh, one thing's for sure, Neil couldn't have done any better. And Jen couldn't have done any... Well. <laughs> Let's just toast the couple. So Neil and Jen. Thank you. And the best man.